Okay, so yesterday we introduced this framework of measurements called the International System of Units and we pointed out the fact that physical units which are in this fr International System of Units are divided into two groups which are the base quantities and the derived quantities and these are the base quantities mass, length, time electric current, temperature, amount of substance, and light intensity. Uh, their symbols, the names of the units, and also the unit symbols. We mentioned that uh, the rest of the other physical quantities which are there in physics, for example, density, volume, uh, pressure, all those things which are not on this list those fall under what are known as derived quantities because we can obtain expressions of those physical quantities by either doing a multiplication or a division of these base quantities okay so for now the task really is to get to the same page what do we mean mean by mass what do we mean by length what do you mean by time electric current temperature amount of substance and light intensity we all want to be on the same page by what we mean by this clearly as i found out yesterday people have got different uh, opinions or knowledge about all these things so that's what we want to get to so that we are all on the same page as we start this course okay so to start with uh, mass, we defined mass as a measure of the inertia of a body. That's what we defined. Inertia being the resistance which a body offers to change in motion or to change in position. So if a body refuses to change position, when you apply a force, when you're trying to push something, then it refuses it offers more resistance that shows that that body has got more mass if a body is moving with a certain velocity then you apply a force either you pull it or you stand in front of it then you try to stop this body but it refuses to stop then that's a sign that that particular body has got more mass so basically mass is a fundamental property of matter it's there the mass is measured in kgs the units for mass is kilograms abbreviated kgs and this kg used to be defined in terms of this object which is which used to be called the international standard kilogram or the in or officially the international prototype kg so mass used to be defined in terms of an object or an artifact however these days the definition of units like mass is no longer in terms of an object okay we have shifted away from defining kgs or whatever these things in terms of objects but now the definition is in terms of physical constant of physics which do not change and in the case of mass mass is now defined in terms of what's known as the Planck's constant and over the past seven years from 19 uh sorry from from 2017 going downwards to 2011 a lot of work has gone into defining what exactly do we refer to as one kg and that definition of the kg is based on the Planck's constant so what what you need to pick out here is that the definition of mass is no longer in terms of an object which is the international uh prototype kilogram but now it's in terms of this Planck's constant then we moved on to length we defined the length as the distance between two points but more specifically the straight line distance between two points which are an object that's what the length is and the length is measured in meters those are the SI units for length and abbreviated m okay length like mass used to be defined in terms of an object and that object is this bar this x-shaped bar which 
is made up of uh, an alloy, an alloy which is a mixture of metals, an alloy of platinum and iridium. The reason why they chose platinum and iridium is because platinum and iridium do not easily corrode. An alloy of platinum and iridium do not easily corrode. And the other thing is, why is the bar X-shaped? Previously, the bar used to be flat, which they used. But a flat bar, if you have uh, held a bar before, a metal bar, a metal bar usually tends to bend. So a flat bar bends. So there was a problem with bending. So in order to sort out this problem with bending, they decided to change the cross-section of the bar into an X-shaped bar. So an X-shaped bar, as you are aware, if you've seen anything like this, does not bend. So that sorted out the bending. So that's why these things, these bars, have this shape of X so that they sort out the bending business. So one meter used to be defined in terms of this bar, the length of this bar, which is the what is known as the standard meter. Okay. Again, the definition of this meter is based on an object or was based on an object. So with all this effort to try to define these units not in terms of objects, but in terms of physical constants. A decision was made to define one meter in terms of the speed of light. And how was this done? Well, we know that the speed of light is this one here, this value. 299,792,000 eight meters per second so that's how much distance light travels in a second with that distance if you divide the particular the distance which light has traveled into two hundred and ninety nine million seven hundred and ninety two thousand four hundred and fifty eight equal parts if you divide that distance into this many equal parts what you're going to end up with is a one meter distance by definition so a decision was made to define the meter as the distance light travels in vacuum during a time interval of 1 over 299,792,458 of a second. Specifically, also more very important here is the fact that this light travels in a vacuum because the speed of light changes when it's traveling in other things. For example, when light is traveling in air, the speed of light is not exactly this, but it's slightly less. The speed of light reduces even more when light is traveling in water or when light is traveling through a metal. So light slows down when it travels in other pieces of matter, for example, water, a liquid, or a solid. It's going to struggle to travel through a solid, so the speed of light is going to change. So, this 299 million, the, when we say light has, has got a speed of 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, what we mean is it has got that speed in a vacuum. That's where it has got that speed. We make approximations when it comes to air. Say, okay, it, it also has a similar speed. Practically, the speed is the same, but it's not exactly the same. So that's what we did yesterday. We talked about length, what length is, how length is measured, how length used to be, how the meter used to be defined in terms of this bar, and how the meter is currently defined these days. The third physical quantity, base quantity, is time. Now, in one way or another, as this paragraph shows that we have measured time before or we use time in one way or another okay so our definition of time really it depends on what you are trying to do but in physics we're not going to ask you to say measure eight hours or something you know what you're going to ask you is to measure a duration of time when something is happening okay that's what we're interested in our interest in physics when it comes to town to time has to do with duration how many seconds does a particular event happen or how many hours or how many how long 
was something boiling or how long or something cooling so basically our interest in time when it comes to physics has got everything to do with duration we measure how long a particular event happens that's why we're interested in time these other things like when you if you set your stopwatch or your alarm clock to wake you up at 06 hours that's you we are not interested in that our interest is when events are happening for how long are they happening okay and that's how we define time in physics the units for time is the second please if you have got any questions feel free to ask or well, there's some people who need to be admitted okay yeah a lot someone says a bit of zoom okay so the unit for time is the second and how do we define a second okay. the definition uh casper microphone the definition of time is as follows okay we define sorry the definition of one second is as follows one second is defined as the duration always we are interested in duration the duration of nine billion one hundred and ninety two million six hundred and thirty one thousand seven hundred and seventy periods of light emitted when the outermost the outermost cesium electron transits between two other fine levels of ground state cesium 113 so here there's a mention of this cesium atom okay and these days there's what are known as atomic clocks which scientists who are doing very serious science use to measure time around the world very expensive but very very accurate so how does this definition of time basically come in well what you have here is a model of a cesium atom so at the center here you've got a nu nucleus which is made up of protons and electrons then as you can see uh, protons and neutrons and as you can see there are these lines with these white balls in them these lines where these white balls are those are what we call electron shells or energy levels okay so in the first shell you can see that there are only two electrons there the second shell they're about eight i think third i think it should be 16 or 32 one of those things i'm not very sure but that's besides the point the point here really here is that for an electron to be in a particular shell it needs to have a certain amount of energy okay So for an electron to occupy a particular energy shell, it needs to have a certain amount of energy. You can think of it as, uh, the example I like to give is, let's say you go to a lodge, okay? You go to a lodge, you have been, you have been on a journey, you go to the lodge, and the nucleus, where the nucleus is, that's where the bar is. So basically the nucleus, very, very loud. So if a room, if we make an example of where we say these energy levels are rooms in a lodge, the closer the room is to the bar, the cheaper that room is. Okay, so the further away you are from the bar, the quieter it is, which makes the room a bit more expensive. If you can use this example, okay, the issue with these electron levels is for you to be in an electron level you need to have a specific amount of energy or a specific amount of money so if an electron energy level was a room next to a bar and the first room the price for that particular room is five quarter if you have got four quarter you can't enter that room you need to have exactly five quarter if you have got six quarter you will have to give up to the waitress or whatever it is, the, the person who cleans the room, you have to give up the one quarter. You are only allowed to enter that room if you have got exactly five quarter. 
Then the next room after that, maybe you need 10 kwacha. So if you've got 12 kwacha, you have to give up the two kwacha. Okay, so basically that's how electron energy levels work. For an electron to occupy a certain energy level, it needs to have exactly the same amount of energy required for that particular energy level. The further away you move from the nucleus, the more energy an electron requires to occupy that particular energy level. If an electron wants to occupy a certain energy level, then it does not have enough energy. It needs to get that energy from somewhere. And how would the electron do that? Well, we do that by hitting the substance. When you hit the substance, you are adding energy to that particular substance. So the electrons are going to get that energy from there. On the other hand, you have this particular electron which is living on its own outside here. So this electron here has got the most energy. Okay. Sometimes this electron out here gets bored. So it changes energy levels. However, for it to change energy levels to join these other electrons down here, it has got more energy, but for it to come here, a certain amount of energy is required and it has got more than that energy. So it has to give up this energy. When an electron has got more energy, then it gives up this energy so that it can stay in a certain level. Okay. The process of giving up energy, which an electron is doing, that's what is known as the emission of light. What you see as light being emitted is basically electrons giving up energy from a metal or from any substance which is emitting light. So this particular electron sometimes comes down here. So it emits, in that process, it emits light. That light being emitted, as you are aware from some of your physics, that light is a wave. And all waves have got a period and have got a wavelength. So the light emitted by this electron as it changes energy states has got a certain period, which is the period we are talking about here. Periods of light emitted when the outermost cesium electron transits between two hyperfine levels of ground state, cesium-113. So when this outermost electron changes state, comes down, it emits light. That light it emits has got a very, very, very small period. That period of light emitted by this electron as it moves between two energy states, energy levels, times this 9 billion, 192, 631,770. This is what is defined as one second. We know that one second is very, very small. But imagine this one second divided into this many parts. Okay, that's going to give you the period of the light emitted by cesium. If the period is very, very small, the period of a wave is very, very small. The other thing you are aware of is that, as you are going to see, there is a quantity called frequency, which waves have. The frequency of a wave is equal to 1 divided by the period. So if the period of the wave is very, very small, then the frequency is going to be very, very high. And the frequency is related to the energy. So the more, the higher the frequency of lights, the more that light is energetic. So basically, the light emitted from cesium is not any ordinary light. This is very, very dangerous light. And cesium, some of its isotopes are radioactive. So basically, this is a radioactive substance. So are we clear on what a second is? Which part of the definition of a second yes, is, clear, sir. is not clear? There's someone who said, no, they're not clear. Which part of this definition is not clear? A second is a duration. It's a duration of 9,192,631, uh, 9,192,631,770 
periods. The period is the time it takes a wave to cover the distance of a wavelength. The light being emitted by this cesium is a wave. Light is waves. Every wave has got a period, which is a, a duration of time. Okay, so that duration of time emitted from this atom, this cesium atom times this number. So this is a very, very small period. This is a very, very small duration of time. This small duration of time multiplied by this number, that is what gives you one second. Is this clear? Okay. So, what is not clear? Sorry? Okay, some, some people are saying it's complicated or stuff like that. Well, okay, fine. Let's leave it on the fact that you measure time in seconds. Is that fine with anyone? Ask later. You ask later, guys. Ask okay. Later. The other thing which I do not accept. The other thing which I do not accept when I ask if something is not clear or not, you can't tell me everything is not clear. That is unacceptable. Are we clear? There has to be something which is not clear. You can't say, I have not understood everything. There has to be something you have not understood. Something specific. Okay? Derek, can you switch off your microphone if you're not speaking? There has to be something specific you have not understood. Okay? Next. We move on to temperature. Okay. In your day-to-day -day life, you would define the temperature as how hot something is or how cold something is. Okay. However, this definition of temperature as as much as it is good for everyday people in the street. This definition of temperature as the degree of hotness or coldness is not good enough. Okay? In physics, when we are talking about temperature, what we actually mean is something called thermodynamic temperature. Okay? When we are talking about temperature, what we actually mean is something called thermodynamic temperature. And this thermodynamic temperature measures something known as the total internal energy. Total internal energy refers to all the energy which an object has. If you've got a piece of matter, if you've got a mass of one kg of something, all the energy which that particular object has, that is what is referred to as total internal energy. This total internal energy is a measure of what is known as thermodynamic temperature. So the more the total internal energy you have, the more the thermodynamic the more the thermodynamic temperature is. It's like when you when you heat up water. Okay? When you heat up water, you put water in your pot, then you put the pot on the stove with this water. Eventually, as time passes, the water will start moving. Okay? The water starts to move. It starts to boil. It starts to move around the pot. The more that movement of the water, the molecules of the water, the more the water moves, the higher the temperature. Okay? When you're boiling water, the more the water moves, the higher the temperature of that particular water. Okay? So when you measure the all the the, the total energy of the water what you're actually getting is in a, in a way you are measuring something known as thermodynamic temperature okay so when something is hot when something feels hot it is because the atoms or the molecules which make up this particular thing are moving around they're vibrating the vibration of if, if, if it's a solid you're holding when it's a piece of metal, then it feels hot. 
the atoms are not moving per se, but the vibration of the atoms is very, very large. Okay. And from those vibrations, we can measure what is known as the total internal energy, depending on how the vibration is going. So there's a way of measuring this thing. So when we are talking about temperature in physics, what we are actually talking about, we are interested in the kinetic energy, the potential energy, the vibrational energy, the all the energy of the molecules or the atoms which make up an object. We add up all these energies. Then the sum of these energies, that is what is referred to as total internal energy. This total internal energy is related to what is known as the thermodynamic temperature. Are we clear? Are we clear on what thermodynamic temperature is? No. Yes, we are clear. Thermodynamic temperature is a measure. It is a way because you see the, the total internal We're energy, clear, the total internal energy of your atoms and molecules, you can't measure it directly. So you have to measure it through temperature. Okay. So the higher the temperature, that tells you that the vibrations, these atoms of your objects have got higher, they've got a lot of energy. Are we clear? Thermodynamic temperature is measured. Thermodynamic temperature is measured in Kelvins. Your normal temperature, your normal temperature, the one you say, oh, it's hot, it's cold. That temperature is what is referred to as celsius temperature. That one is measured in degrees centigrade of whatever it is. That is not a base quantity. When you talk about temperature in physics, we are talking about thermodynamic temperature. Okay. And how do we define one Kelvin? Since thermodynamic temperature is defined in terms of Kelvins, well, I have got a very good illustration here, which is something most likely very, very difficult to see. So what we have here is basically, as you can see, water in a glass, you have got ice cubes, and you have got bubbles. So this water in a glass is existing as a solid, which is the ice cube, a liquid, which is the water, and a gas, which is the bubble. When a substance, when a substance exists in all these three states of matter, at the same time, solid, liquid, and gas, we say that particular substance is at its triple point. Okay? We say that particular substance is at its triple point now the triple point of water which was chosen for this particular task again this definition is based on some at least it's not a really a substance but it's based on some condition the triple point of water in degrees in in kelvins the triple point of water in kelvins is 273 Point one six, I think one, one six or one five kelvins. This two hundred and seventy three point one six or one five kelvins is equivalent in degrees Celsius to zero point zero one degrees. Okay, so this is a very very small. This is a very very low temperature, zero point zero one degrees. This two seven three point one six one five kelvins. Okay, which is the triple point of water, and this. For you to have this, apart from the low temperature, what you need also is a very, very low pressure. You need a pressure of 0 0.16 kilopascals. Wherever you are, the air you are breathing has a certain amount of pressure. That pressure which you... Excuse me. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. I got close to the laptop. You got lost in the laughter? Yeah, it's a What happened? <laughs> Just a minute.
Okay, so here you've got an example of what electric charge moving looks like. Okay, when you've got wires and there are sparks and stuff, that is charge. Another example of electric charge which is moving is lightning. So when you look at lightning, that is charge which is moving from the sky into the ground. That is current, a lot of current. And that's why when you look at lightning, when it's raining, there's lightning and thunder in a certain place, Zesco switches off the electricity because that electricity from lightning and thunder can actually enter the Zesco lines and they it bends stuff. So they take precautions to switch things off. Okay. Now, previously, how was an umpire defined? An umpire was defined in terms of the force between two conductors. So what umpire did, Pierre um, uh, André Marie umpire, what he did, he carried out an experiment where he had two current current conductors. So this is a conductor and that is a conductor, each of them one meter. Okay. Then these conductors were placed at a distance, separate separation distance of one meter. And they, as you can see, they had a very, very small cross section area. So how did he measure to say, okay, the current which is now passing is one umpire. He measured the force of attraction between these conductors. The fact is, when electrons are moving, meaning that when there's a current flowing through a wire or a conductor, that wire or conductor acts as a magnet. Are you aware of this? when a current is passing through a wire that wire acts as a magnet the magnetism is very weak but nonetheless it still acts as a magnet are you aware of this that a current carrying conductor acts as a magnet and that's how you end up with something called an electromagnet you i don't know if you you have come across the term electromagnet an electromagnet is just a piece of wire which has been wound, then put in a casing, then someone switches on the electricity because of the winding and the current passing through that thing, then that thing turns into a magnet and it can lift things. So in this previous definition of what an umpire is, when these two conductors were put like this, one meter, one meter, conductors one meter apart, then they start attracting each other as you can see here with these blue arrows when the force of attraction is two times 10 to the power minus seven newtons between these two conductors then you say that there is a current of one umpire passing through these conductors so the umpire was defined in terms of another physical quantity called force okay that is previously which is very now this experiment had a problem it is very very difficult to reproduce because if you look here you have to put these wires in a vacuum so these wires had to be in a vacuum then they had to be very long then you have to produce all this thing which is very very difficult to do so another definition of an umpire had to be found and that definition of an umpire which had to be found is the one which is based on something called Holmes law I'm sure you've seen this V is equals to the current multiplied by the resistance this is Holmes law so from this Holmes law why Holmes law because with Holmes law things are very easy to measure it's very easy for us to measure the voltage you got a voltmeter it is also very easy for us to measure this guy the resistance of a conductor or a resistor so the voltage can be accurately measured the resistance of a particular component or a wire can be accurately measured from the voltage and the resistance you can find out what the current is you can do this v so you can say i is equal to v over r so the current definition okay the current definition of what an umpire is what we use today is one which is based on Holmes law because anyone any one of you as you you can see you can create a circuit then from that circuit you can measure the voltage then you can put things in the circuit maybe a resistor then you can you can actually read what the resistance is from the color codes of your resistor 
okay so using home's law is a much more practical way than this process which involves you putting wires in a vacuum then trying to measure the force accurately i don't know exactly how this thing was done but it looks difficult so this definition of an umpire based on these conductors was abandoned and a simpler definition of an umpire based on home's law is what we use these days are we clear one umpire in terms of home's law is basically one volt divided one volt per home okay one umpire is this in terms of home's law so this is something you can measure and you can find out what it is okay then number six uh last but not the least is it yeah electric current light intensity what else is missing here Light intensity, so there's, I think something is missing in the notes. So there's light intensity, then there's supposed to be amount of substance, I don't know where that is. So light intensity, so what does light intensity refer to? Well, light intensity by definition refers to the luminosity, we're going to see what the luminosity is, divided by the solid angle, per solid angle, luminosity per solid angle. Now, luminosity is just how many watts does your bulb emit how many watts of energy does your bulb emit so if you go to the shop then you can buy a bulb then this bulb says six watts that is the luminosity okay if your bulb says 12 watts that is the luminosity so luminosity deals with the source of light how bright how much energy does your bulb emit in all directions that is a luminosity then comes the solid angle so light intensity is basically luminosity divided by solid angle now what do we mean by solid angle well solid angle is related to your normal angle but kind of like a bit different don't you? now imagine the following this Okay, so imagine that at the center here, this is where you've put your bulb, at the center of this thing here, this is where my kesa is, that's where you've put your bulb. Then the light which is being emitted from this particular end comes on this area. It shines on this area. Okay, it shines on this area. The light which is being emitted, it shines on this area. So you can work out what the area of this circle is. Area is equals to you can say pi r square whatever it is what, what that's what the area is then you divide by the distance from the source of light okay so you have the area on which the light is falling the light from the your bulb your bulb whether it's six watts or eight watts if you put a bulb in your room then the wall on which that light is falling the area of that light the area of that space then divided by the distance squared from the wall to the source of light that is what gives you something called solid angle are we clean very much clear sir the solid angle is related to most of you have got phones okay most of you have got phones so if you've got a phone you can do a simple experiment where you switch on the flashlight for your phone. When you switch on your flashlight for your phone, then that side where there's a flashlight, you put that flashlight on your skin. After a few seconds, if you do that, you switch on your flashlight, then you put that flashlight on your skin. After a few seconds, the flashlight is going to start bending your skin. That bending which the light is producing, that's what is referred to as light intensity. The bending you feel when you switch on your flashlight on your skin is related to the area on which the light is falling 
and the distance from your flashlight. When you start moving the flashlight away from your skin, the area on which your flashlight is falling increases and also the distance. Okay? Excuse me, sir. Yes. I think you've muted your mic. I've muted my mic? Too low. No, my mic is not muted. I'm saying when you switch on your flashlight, I'm trying to explain what light intensity is. When you switch on your flashlight, okay, on your phone, then you put your flashlight on your skin. After a few seconds, if you do this experiment, you are going to feel a burning sensation on your skin. It's like you have put a fire on your skin, but that burning sensation is because of the light. Okay? That is what is referred to as light intensity. Now, the same light intensity, when you start moving your flashlight away from your skin, this, the amount of burning you're going to feel is going to reduce. The reason is because light intensity also depends on the distance of your flashlight from your skin. It also depends on the area of your flashlight, how big your flashlight is, where it's falling. Okay, so when you divide, if you have a source of light, like here, if you have a source of light at the center, then the light from this source falls on a particular area, which is this A, then this particular area is divided by the, by the distance from the source of light, that is what is referred to as a solid angle. Okay, so your luminosity, which is your 9 watts or your 12 watts, divided by the solid angle that is what gives you something called light intensity are we clear very much clear sir. okay now there's something missing in these notes which is amount of substance but you know amount of substance is basically measured in amount of substance we are talking about the number of moles no, I don't I don't know why that thing is not here. No. Yes. Questions? Papa. Yes. I'm going to question. Mm -hmm. What if like you hold the light at ninety degrees and someone holds it at forty five degrees? If you hold the light at ninety degrees and at forty five degrees? Yes. In that case, what is that angle? What is the angle? Is it the distance from the light to the wall where you have lit your light. So solid angle is the area where the light is falling. That light has to fall somewhere, right? So the area where the light is falling divided by the distance from the wall to the source of light squared. That's what the solid angle is. Are we clear? Now, let me stop sharing a bit. I'm saying solid angle is related to the area. When you switch, when you, when, when you, when you, these things, uh, a lamp or something? I don't know what, what you call it. Torch. When you get a torch, you know a torch? Yeah. You know a torch, right? Yes, sir. Yes, the light from a torch. Yeah. yeah. Let's take for example a torch. Okay. When you switch on your torch, the light from your torch is going to fall. You switch on a torch. You point your torch on a wall. Okay. There is an area where the light is going to fall, right? Where the torch is shining. There is an area where the torch is going to be shining. That area is what you're talking about. Then divided by the distance from the torch. The area on, which, on, on, the, on the area on which the light is going to fall depends on how far you are from the wall. So the closer you move your torch to the wall, the smaller the area becomes. Have you observed this? So as your torch moves closer to the wall, the area on which the light is falling reduces. That is the area we are saying. That is the A you are seeing there. Okay? 
So the area A divided by the distance from the torch, the distance is squared. That's what makes solid angle an angle. Okay. Are we clear? That's what we mean by solid angle. Yes. Sir. I'm trying to figure out something here. Why the other knots are not here? Other bit of the knots. Mm. Just a minute. Any questions? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ask questions. Huh. Yes. Some of us haven't been able to lock in the since the interface started so i don't know what might be the issue so right now i'm just using a friend account why haven't you been able to log in are you not able to access mundo no. yeah i'm able I'm, I'm even like i went on the app just waiting for approval i'm not seeing anything here i'm not seeing anything here yeah i've been doing that like for 30 minutes yeah, now. i'm not seeing anything that's the thing so i can't okay, right now, uh, so right now i haven't seen i've i've approved everything which i could approve oh, okay, sir. Maybe Hello, sir. yes yeah i wanted to find out uh which book uh are you using which book am i using yes for these definitions yeah well the book we use is uh these principles of physics and these definitions are available on the internet. What's happening? Okay, okay, sir. Hmm. Okay, uh, I think I can't fix this problem now. I'll have to fix it later. Okay. Uh, any other questions? We have done our one hour, I think. But we started at, yeah. So any other questions? Yes. So, uh, the best unit for solid intensity, sorry, light intensity is the candela. So, one candela is just basically defined as one watt per stair radian. Questions? Yes, I think I got Uh huh. You want to see me in person? You can't, we can't meet in person, there's COVID, my friend. We have to meet online, just like this. Just like this. This is how we're going to meet. Okay. Okay. We are going to meet like this. Then, apart from the lectures, apart from, uh, excuse me, apart from the, the lectures themselves, like this, during the course of the year, as we proceed slowly, slowly. Excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to speak. Okay. I'm saying we are going to meet for the lectures like this, but at the same time, you have to be aware that. Physics is more than just lectures because you have to be able to work out problems. Therefore, I will during the course of the weeks in future, in the coming weeks, as we cover more material, the people are not speaking. Can you please switch on your, switch off your microphones? Hangoma. Then there's Chimwemwe. Can you please switch off your microphones? So there will be another session which i'm going to arrange this one is a separate session where we try to show you how to work out problems yes you're going to have tutorials physical tutorials but this is not going to be a physical tutorial this is going to be an online tutorial this is going to be online so like this we have a problem a physics problem then we discuss i'm not really showing you but we discuss how the problem is supposed to be worked out so that we find 
the easiest way to work out these problems. This is what is called, the, I'm, I'm calling this thing an online curve, you know, a physics curve, right? Like we sit, we look at these problems and we discuss them, then of course there's going to be a recording of that, that session, then the recording of that session, we're going to put it on YouTube, we're going to put it in Moodle so that you can look at these problems at any time during the course of the year. Because what's going to happen is you've been in the university for some time, but the rest of the time you're going to be at home. But you still need to continue learning while you're at home. You need to continue, you need to continue having classes. You also need to continue learning how to solve problems. So these problems we are going to have in a lecture like this, it's me who is doing most of the talking. But in our online, because I'll say an online tutorial, in the online tutorials I'm going to arrange for three hours in a week. So one hour, one hour, one hour from 20 hours to 21 hours, maybe on Monday, on a Tuesday and then on Wednesday, like that. In these, in these online things, I'm going to arrange, we, you are going to be discussing, you discuss with me, I discuss with you, we're going to be talking about these questions. So we discuss, we discuss, we discuss, and we find the answers to this problem so that you learn how to solve problems. Hello? Chimwemwe, your microphone. Emmanuel. Emmanuel Mlenga. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Chimemo didn't want to switch off his microphone, so we removed him. So if we ask you to switch off your microphone, you don't want to switch off your microphone, then you're not speaking anything, you're just making noise, we'll throw you out. It's very, very easy with this online thing. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, I hear that during labs, we are going to be allowed to take textbooks in the, in the lab. Yeah, you can go with the textbook. So, where are we going? To... What? No, like, where are we going to find the textbook? Because we are not there in the library. The Department of Physics has got a library. So you need to go and talk to the the people in the department, the technicians, the, those lab guys. So you talk to them, then you ask them for books. If they are there. So how many are like? How many would I need like for a lab? Because I hear I use a pub, right? Um, I need to write like the reference thing. Well, the way the physics labs really are. Rollins Banda, Rollins Kunda, microphone. Okay. So the way the physics clubs are, and also Regan, your microphone, please. So in the physics club, we're going to give you a booklet, which tells you exactly what you're supposed to do. Okay. We're going to give you a booklet, which tells you, that's why you're paying that hundred quarter thing you're paying. Okay. That's for the booklets and where you're supposed to write your things and everything else. So, yeah, I think some of these things, you have to wait until you see the whole thing, how it works. So I think it might be a bit difficult for me to explain. Yes. yes, yes any, any other question? Yes. Yes, yes sir. What specific day will we start now writing our physics practicals? They will tell you there will be a notice on your on, on, on your first year notice board. It will be put there. I'm not in charge of the labs. Someone else is. So once they are ready, they will put a notice on you. You just keep on checking that physics not, not, notice board. They will tell you when the labs are there and when you're supposed to go to the labs and which lab you're supposed to go to. 
Okay. So keep on checking the notice board. Yes. Yes. Which topic don't you know? Which topic don't you know? I'm talking about is I'm talking about physical units, about physical quantities and their units. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. They are notes on your Moodle. Yes. Another question. Sir. Yes. I'm putting question. I'm having a question, sir. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm back. Hello. Yes. Have you paid? Yes, I've already paid. They are making the lab manuals right now. So once you have paid, you keep your receipt. You keep your receipt. Once the lab manuals are ready, a notice will be put up. Say, lab manuals are ready. Bring your receipt which you paid with. Then they'll give you a lab manual. Yes. Any other question? Yes. Yes, sir. As we were explaining about the temperature, mm -hmm. I wanted to be clear about the difference between temperature and heat. Okay. Uh, yeah, heat. When you talk about heat, heat and temperature are related, but they're not the same. Okay. Heat and temperature are related, but they're not the same. When you talk about what we refer to as heat is, uh, remember temperature measures something called internal energy, right? Internal energy is all the energy which a substance has because its atoms are vibrating and stuff like that. Now, when some of this internal energy is transferred from one object to another object, okay, that part of energy, of the internal energy which is transferred, that is what we call heat. Thank you very much. Are we clear? So basically, when you talk about heat, you're talking about internal energy which is in transit. That's why we say heat flows from a hot body to a colder body. What is happening is that the hotter body has got more internal energy compared to the colder body. So some of the energy from the hot body is transferred to the cold body. So the the colder body, the atoms of the cold body start vibrating more. That is what's referred to as heat. Thank the, you very much, sir. Okay, any other question? Yes. What about what? The course outline for physics. The course outline for physics. Yeah, probably we need to put that thing. It's there. We need to put it up. We need to get it from. Mr. Chimba, I think I'll, I'll speak to him so that we can put it up on your on your model. So that bit will be okay, sorted out. Yes, it will be sorted out. Sir. Yes. Another question, sir. Yes. Uh, as in, in case you have due to the need to express some big problem. Mm -hmm. So, the thing about if you have got network problems is. Like I've said, in my case, when I do an online class, I record the online class. Okay? I make a video recording of this online class. Then this video recording of the online class will be uploaded. I will upload it to my YouTube first. Then after I will upload it to my YouTube, I will put a link to the video in your Moodle. So in case you missed the class you can rewatch the video recording at any time of the day at any part of the any any month during the course of the year if you want to rewatch this thing you can go and watch it again because we are going to put links on your Moodle to the video yes
My name, the name of my YouTube channel are just my names, Gift Stone, that's all. So if you search for my names, then you'll find something with videos on it, Anka. Yeah. Then you make a subscription to it. So that if I upload something, you get a notification that I have put something. Now, I put a lot of things on my YouTube channel. You have to be, you just focus on the things which concern your cause. Are we clear? Yes. No. Yes. You what? No. Why do you, you think I want to talk to you? But no, no I don't want to have a conversation with you. You are too many, on Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not going to happen, on mm. You are too many. You are too many. You are too many. You are like you are one thousand six hundred, on So how do I have a personal conversation with you? Then there are the, the the other ones who are taking ten ten. They are about one thousand one hundred. So basically, we have. 2,700 first years taking physics. We can't have conversations with you. <laughs> Sorry, but that's a fact, John. Okay, so we we are going to have conversations during the lecture like this. You ask me questions. Also, during the online curve, because we are going to be having this thing where you, you want to talk, oh, I, don't, I didn't understand this where we're trying to solve problems. You, we can talk during that time. We can have a conversation during that time. Any other time, personal conversations, no. I'm very particular about this whole personal conversation thing because in January, I caught COVID and it was very, very bad. So I'm very, very particular. I don't want to have any conversations with people. Especially people are not wearing masks. Okay? So personal conversations, no. There is no personal conversations. We have to meet like this online and also during the cave. Don't worry, we're going to meet a lot of times. You will become very familiar, like we know each other personally on the, through the computer. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we have come to the end. Let's come to the end. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Sorry? Group. Yeah, we are trying to arrange those things also so that you can have a physics thing. I have to find a lecture who is who's got time at that particular time so that we can have we can put links for your for your classes on, on Moodle. Okay? So we are working on those things. Yes, we are working on that. Hopefully okay. by next week you should start having classes. Yes, All right. Okay, thank you. Sir. All right. Okay, let's call it a day. Uh, let me also stop the recording so that I can upload the thing to YouTube and put it on Modo so that the other people okay, couldn't. Have it. Yes, right. they can do the same. Okay, yes, so I'm going to leave the meeting. If you want to continue talking to each other, you can stay and talk to each other. Anger.